My name is Matthew Dillon. I'm a transport economist here at Arup. And we've been part of the Crossrail story for over 30 years. That's from the project's conception, through its planning and its design, all the way through to tunnelling priorities. And it's a fascinating story of how railways can shape communities. In my team, we look at the way transport projects can revitalise communities. That means cleaner air, reduced congestion, new homes, more access to jobs, education, leisure and growing businesses. And rail always forges new connections between communities within a city. This is an ideal route for a rail line. It covers some of the busiest sections of the existing network. So that means it provides a huge additional amount of capacity, which will relieve overcrowding on some of the most heavily used tube and rail lines. The Elizabeth line will go from Heathrow Airport in the west through to the bright lights in the retail of the West End, through to the financial centre of the city, onto the skyscrapers of Canary Wharf, and then further east to some areas uh, that have huge potential for development. And we're already starting to see some activity around the Elizabeth Line station at Abbey Wood in East London, including a new library, a new public square, and a new supermarket. And the number of people employed near the station has increased by over 50% since the Crossrail announcement 15 years ago. Nearby, at North Thamesmead, there are plans for 15,000 new homes. People travelling from Abbey Wood to Tottenham Court Road, which currently takes 46 minutes, will only take 24 minutes. But more importantly, these reductions change the way people move around London. Areas that were previously seen as being far apart will be almost physically moved closer together by these new rapid connections. And what we should also see is a huge casualisation in trips. So that means people making more spontaneous journeys that they might not otherwise have made before. That means more job opportunities for people, more access to labour for employers. It means more places of education, more specialist hospitals and more leisure opportunities come within easier reach of people's homes. The arts and culture industry directly employs 26,000 people in central London alone. And it's a key part of London's reputation as a world city. The Elizabeth Line will provide a direct link and a boost to London's theatres, venues and galleries across the capital. We are looking at a massive increase in the number of people brought to Oxford Street, over 50% by 2031. And we estimate that this could lead to an increased income of some £13 billion annually. Once the Elizabeth Line is fully open, it will add a whole 10% to the capacity of central London's transport network. That will equip London for decades to come and it will cement its reputation as a city that invests and that innovates.